Welcome to the show. Today we are talking about 10 hidden gems for the 3DS. Sometimes the simplest of ideas is all it takes to create something memorable and with push mode this is exactly what you get. The aim of each level is to reach a flag by pulling out the colourful, differently shaped blocks in order to get your character called Marlow to the goal. You can walk, jump and pull blocks, that's it. I know it sounds weird and unappealing but it's actually a fresh and addictive premise that has kept me coming back. The levels vary in difficulty and at times will leave you scratching your head wondering how to advance but if you're stuck for long enough it allows you to skip to the next level. Various different mechanics mechanics are introduced to the player, which manages to keep the puzzle solving fresh right up until its completion. But what manages to elevate Pushmo above and beyond is the inclusion of a level design mode, which offers you the opportunity to design your own courses, which can then be shared to other 3DS users through the use of QR codes. This adds so much variety and value to the game, but admittedly would have been benefited even more by allowing the player to share their creations online. If you're a fan of the island flyover minigame in Wii Sports Resort, then you will love Pilot Wings for the 3DS. It follows the same basic formula of its predecessors that allows you to fly around an environment, completing various tasks like passing through rings in the sky, shooting floating targets, putting out fires and taking photos. At the end of each challenge, you're evaluated on your performance, which takes into consideration the time, landing precision and fuel consumption to generate a score. The game gives you the choice of three distinct vehicles that include a hang glider, plane and rocket belt. Each possess their own attributes and offer a bit of variety when approaching each mission, but the game sadly is nowhere near as complex as its N64 predecessor. Though it plays very well and the 3D effect adds an extra layer to the on-screen action, it just doesn't compare to the series past. For a launch title though, Pilot Wings Resort is really impressive. It may not include a ton of content, but for what it offers, it manages to execute it well, resulting in a fun pick-up-and-play game that deserves a space on your shelf. To anyone who loves a challenging, old-school style of gameplay, Shinobi is the game for you. Although the graphics aren't superb, the art style more than makes up for it and succeeds the majority of the time, with only a few of the levels looking a bit bland. This is all made up for by the excellent controls and difficulty of the game. Shinobi on the 3DS is hard, you're probably going to die a lot, but the more you play, the more you learn the game's mechanics and the way in which you can use them to your advantage. The levels are nice and long and usually provide some kind of on-rail segment that adds a bit of variety to the usual form as well as a bigger emphasis on platforming than in previous installments. A lot of people complained about the way Shinobi 3D handled blocking. Instead of just holding the button to block, you instead had to time it correctly, which in my opinion presents more of a challenge to the player, which is always good in my books. This game isn't for everyone though, it'll take a lot of time to learn and master the several aspects that make up the gameplay, and Shinobi 3D is not afraid to challenge you. But don't let that put you off, as hidden beneath its layers of difficulty is a highly rewarding game. If you love fun and challenging shooters with a clever mix of styles and a huge amount of boss battles, then Nano Assault is definitely worth checking out. Consisting of over 30 levels, the game at first can appear quite short. You'll have probably blasted your way through the story in about 4 hours, but Nano Assault's endless appeal is found within its arcade and boss rush modes. There is enough arcade style goodness to keep it coming back time and time again in order to get the highest score. And to top it off, the game is gorgeous. It manages to showcase what the hardware is capable of, whilst all also taking advantage of the extra depth provided by the 3D effect. As well as looking the part, Nano Assault also delivers one of the best soundtracks I've heard in a while. Overall, Nano Assault truly feels like a console experience in the palm of your hands and it's hard to ignore the level of craft that has gone into the game, making it one of the titles that deserves your time. You take control of a 10-year-old school kid called Sota, who has recently arrived in a leafy Tokyo suburb. As quiet and ordinary as the town first appears, it does have an unusual reputation. Every Friday, giant Godzilla-sized monsters appear to fight battles on its outskirts. The game plays out as a sort of interactive story with very little action apart from a simplistic card-battling minigame which is themed around the giant monsters whose cards you collect as you explore the environments. Attack of the Friday Monsters is more of a game about setting a mood, playing with the wonder and imagination 
imagination of childhood set against the hardships of adult life and the way in which children deal with this. Visually the game is stunning and goes a long way in presenting a believable world and set of characters that kept me engaged right until the end of the experience. If you have fond memories of watching Power Rangers on a Saturday morning, the vibe and atmosphere presented by Attack of the Friday Monsters will definitely appeal to you. Virtue's Last Reward is the second game in the Zero Escape series. If you haven't played the first title 999, I highly recommend that you go back and check that one out in order to appreciate Last Reward even more. Like the game before it, Last Reward presents a mixture of heavy character and story development, multiple branching paths that lead to various endings, and challenging puzzles that all come together to offer a truly unique experience. Instead of completely changing the established formula, Last Reward improves upon nearly every aspect of 999. Admittedly, this game will not be for everyone, I can best describe it as a visual novel of sorts. It's very text heavy and could potentially turn a few players off as the plot unfolds gradually, with the character's intentions unclear through the greater part of the game. But the subtlety of the clues, red herrings and revelations will keep you playing if you are willing to look past this unique sense of gameplay. I cannot recommend this game enough. If story in a video game is important to you, and if you are not bound by a blood oath to never play a puzzle game, the last reward is definitely worth the purchase. This game grabbed me straight away and pulled me into its world like few other 3DS titles have. It offers an immense amount of freedom to the player and allows you to go and do whatever you like right from the get-go. Imagine the depth, content and scale of an MMORPG condensed perfectly to fit on a handheld console and what you get is fantasy life. There is so much to see and do. With this huge amount of quests, customization, and crafting options presented, the game feels a bit like Skyrim only delivered in a very cute package. The story is not particularly complex or original, though I found it entertaining enough and it more than serves the purpose of introducing you to the world. It's definitely on the light side, so if you're looking for a complex plot with many surprises, you won't find that here. But the game more than makes up for its shortcomings in story with its Zelda-esque combat and gameplay that is not overly complicated, resulting in an experience that caters to many different types of players. For me, Fantasy Life is one of the best games the system has to offer. It came out of the blue and was a complete surprise. If you like Room Factory or similar games of that nature, Fantasy to see life will deliver. For fans of tactical strategy games, Ghost Recon will surely give you exactly what you're looking for. For those of you who are not very familiar with the genre, the game makes it simple enough to play and the way that it guides you through the earlier levels will surely arm you with what you need to know. You control a squad of six ghosts, with each belonging to a certain class such as a sniper, engineer and medic. Each possesses a number of unique abilities that all contribute to the on-screen action and your success in each mission. A lot of the fun lies in figuring out the right combination of operatives that are suited to each encounter. Counter. The game offers a great level of customization that also allows you to choose from an array of equipment for each character resulting in one of the best strategy games I have played since the days of Advance Wars on the GBA. Unfortunately though, the presentation doesn't match up to the great gameplay. The characters are tiny, cutscenes are hugely uninspired, but the 3D effect does add a unique perspective on the action, allowing you to easily determine the depth of each battle. A few minor annoyances aside, if you're looking for a fun but complex game for the 3DS, this is the one to get. Developed by Intelligent Systems and presented as a new IP for the 3DS, Codename Steam sees you becoming a part of a unique team set on dealing with an alien menace. The game is incredibly funny and fully embraces this aspect with humour being found in every corner of the game. It all feels insanely jolly but beneath its comic book style visuals and humour lies a game with a deep sense of strategy. The action takes place on a grid with each movement requiring the use of Steam. The game is built around the concept of Steam and half of the battle is knowing when to save your deposits in order to pull off some of the game's pretty neat mechanics such as the overwatch, which will help you catch enemies off guard. You get to choose from a huge array of characters that all possess their own unique special moves and attributes that can contribute to the amount of steam you have and the effectiveness of your weapons. Codename Steam manages to deliver a fresh experience with its unique style, diverse cast, there is a lot of fun to be had with this game. Sadly not on par with Advance Wars and Fire Emblem, but with the amount of content on offer it's a title that deserves a place in your collection.
When talking about Coded Princess, it's hard not to compare it to the golden memories of Guardian Heroes. With nearly identical gameplay, it's impossible not to, but where Guardian Heroes was incredibly immersive and presented itself with well, incredible level design, Code of Princess opts to go for very short time attack levels instead. This aspect of the game was clearly created in order to cater to the pick up and play nature of a handheld, and in my opinion, serves the game well. You have the choice of various characters as well as the opportunity to level each of them up and adorn them with a wide array of armor and weapons that up the ante of the action. Gameplay wise, everything is tight and rewards players who are willing to take the time to learn the intricacies of the combat system. This game is absolutely silly at times, but it only manages to add to its unique charm, resulting in one of the more memorable experiences available on the 3DS. If you're a fan of side-scrolling beat-em-ups, this is the one to get.